Welcome, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights. This is an episode called 9.5 Insights. That's not like 95 insights or nine and a half insights, but it's insights about the 9.5 that BGS has. I think it's more noteworthy with the BGS, although most of the other grading services have a grade between nine and 10. PSA, not one of those. That The industry volume leader, they have a 10 and then they have a nine. They don't have anything above a 10. BGS actually has above a 10 if you consider a black label, 10s across the board. So BGS 10 is not perfection. BGS black 10 is perfection. BGS 9.5 is gem mint, which is not perfection. PSA 10 is gem mint, which is not perfection. There's lots of different 10s. Anyway, I just got on a little bit of a rant here. I was listening to Sports Card Investor. I just love listening to different podcasts, getting different perspectives. Well, this was an episode when Jeff wasn't there and his excellent teammates were batting some things around about grading and about 9.5s and about the gem rates and things like that. And I just wanted, I didn't pull off to the side of the road, but I just thought I'm going to address this. There's a lot of people thinking this is the way it goes or it doesn't go. And I just thought maybe I need to just set the record straight and say, I'm not upset that a 9.5 does not cross over to a PSA 10. When they get a slab and it says that Beckett grading determined that this was not a perfect card, well, PSA has a choice between a 10 and a 9, and 10 is their mystique of the uh, not perfect because they say what it is, the gem mint card. At any rate, I just thought I'd look at that from a bunch of different angles, from me being around at the beginning of BGS, having a lot of respect for PSA and others, but just seeing how this might fit in the overall context of making sense of where BGS is in the pecking order. I will note that in 2005, when I sold the company, Beckett grading was pretty widely considered. We'd won awards for being the leading grading company. I think our volume was right up there with PSA. And I believe 9.5s in some cases sold better than, than PSA 10s. I attribute that mainly to the transparency and the report card more so than because 9.5 is not bigger than 10. So 10 is psychologically better, but our delivery of a report card gave people an assurance to know that this is a 9.5. It's not a perfect 10, but it's so close. Whereas a PSA 10 is just their top grade. It is what it is. I just thought I'd riff on that a little bit and pass it on. If you've got any comments or questions, you can send them in, Dr. James Beckett at uh, gmail.com, all spelled out. Thanks, Jeff and crew, for uh, provoking that. Again, it comes up in other podcasts as well, but I'm a lifer. I think BGS is around. It's always going to be a force. I'd like it to be a, a stronger force. I'd like it to resume the, the standing it had when I was there, and I, and I believe it can, but I'm not the boss anymore. So enjoy the episode, enjoy the hobby, and I will be back again in a couple of days with another episode. Yeah, I'm listening to Jeff Wilson's crew talking about how 9.5s, they're making it easier. I really believe they're grading the cards as they come in. And if there's more 10s coming out now than there were a year ago on a BGS pristine scale, it's because cards are being more selectively submitted. People are getting better at what they submit. So the gem rate is going to evolve not because of necessarily a leniency in grading, but because people are submitting different stuff. They're getting better at submitting. The newer cards, the Chrome cards, are more, and the Prism cards are generally easier to get gem rates. Personally, with my name on the brand, again, I'm not the decision maker anymore, but does it upset me that a 9.5 now is worth less than a PSA 10? I think every company's 10 is worth less than a PSA 10. Every company's 9.5 is worth less than a PSA 10. So I'm not surprised that. Am I surprised that a BGS 9.5, even the best of the BGS 9.5s, would be submitted, attempted to be crossed over to SA, and that there would be a very slim chance of getting a PSA 10 if you leave it in the BGS holder? That frankly makes sense to me. BGS has identified as a 9.5 that it's gem mint, but not pristine. In other words, there are some imperfections. And so PSA, in their concept of a 10 is a 10 is a 10, we also know there's 10s with better eye appeal than others of PSA. 
And so all PSA 10s are not the same. All BGS 9.5s are not the same. There's a lot to be said for the eye appeal and sometimes for when it was graded. I will say this. If you were to crack a PSA 10 and submit it to BGS, you wouldn't be getting BGS 10s or black labels very often. But if you left it in the slab. Okay, I think a lot of times a gem mint PSA card is going to be a gem mint C, BGS, CSG. You know, so people think, well, are they getting more lenient? I hope PS stays consistent. Like I said, I have no problem that 9.5 is perceived as not as good a card as a PSA 10. Or, or let's say, it's not that it's not as good a card. It's that because it's a 9.5, BGS has identified explicitly how it is not perfect. And so, to me, that means it's gem mint, but not perfect, not pristine. And so, the allure of PSA 10 is that it's perfect, and that's false. There's PSA 10s that that clearly would be BGS 9.5s. They're not absolutely pristine. And I think PSA has figured that out. Otherwise, they would be responding and try to do a PSA 11 or a 10 perfect or something like that. And I think that's kind of doing some gymnastics that I think they've avoided, just like not doing the 9.5 for PSA is, I won't say it's brilliant, but it is the right decision, I believe, if I put myself in their shoes. What we could all learn from TAG is that TAG has, regardless of what you think of a computerized grading, they have a rounding off algorithm. If it's 976 points out of 1,000, uh, that's a 10, because it rounds up to 10. It's not a 9.5. If it's 974 points, it goes down to a 9.5. Of course, if it's 926 points, it's also a 9.5. So there's a lot of latitude in those grades. But regardless, BGS is saying, uh, again, to use the tag numbering system, BGS is saying a 9.5 is somewhere between 926 points and 974 points, or whatever the exact numbers are. The mystique of the PSA 10 is that it's a 1,000 points. That, friends, is not true. In fact, since there's no 9.5 for PSA, it might be that a PSA 10 is really anything with 951 points or more out of the proverbial 1,000. And so I'm losing no sleep over the fact that 9.5 gets not as much respect as a PSA 10. In my own mind, would I rather have a 10 or a 9.5? I'd rather have a 10, I'd probably have a, a, like to have a 10 from a first tier reputable grading company. If I was totally out for the money and I had a card in my collection and I was assured by PSA I'd get a 10 and I was assured by BGS they'd get a 9.5 and I, you know, I walked it back and forth at the national or something. PSA 10 sells for more, end of story. Okay, that's not how I make my decisions, but that's how a lot of people make their decisions. And for Beckett to change their metrics and their processes to make that not be so, they're just going to mess up their own brand, which, like I said, has my name on it. So I'm not unhappy with the current state of things. BGS has a number of market leadership aspects to their grading process, and I hope they'll continue to develop those and enhance those. And that's been my suggestion to Jeremy and Bill and the other powers that be there. It's a great brand and also have had some discussions over there that they're still convinced that the gem rate is still, because of some peculiarities in the Beckett firewalls and the way the data is handled and the access that Ryan, who's very capable, can easily get, that they're still undercounting to some degree of things that are being graded by Beckett and either they're not showing up in the pop report or they're not being properly counted in the pop report for whatever reason. As he pointed out, BCCG, uh, BAS, I don't know, BVG probably is counted, but anyway, I don't mean to get on a soapbox or get on a rant, but I think, you know, like I said, I, I'm not unhappy with BGS. No one is number one except for PSA in terms of volume. Could BGS do better? Yes, but it's not because they're too lax or too strict. I think they need to be continuing to be consistent, accurate, and probably tough. But because you have a 9.5 and a 10 and a black label, to me as a collector, that would give me some confidence that they're splitting hairs to be really exact. Whereas 
like I said, anything 951 points or more, BSA can put a 10 on it and be accurate according to their scale. So I love the subgrades. It's one of the important aspects of BGF. At any rate, that's my rant for today, and uh, I'd be happy to discuss that with you or have somebody that wants to debate me or uh, take a counterpoint. Hats off to PSA and what they've done. BGS needs to stay the course and be proud that a 9.5 is indeed a gem mint card. And, you know, I submitted a bunch of cards, and I got some 10s this time, but I'm just saying, I have my name on the brand. I'm submitting these cards. I submitted a whole bunch of cards, and a bunch of them were new, and I thought, these are really good-looking cards. These clearly are gem mint. Well, I got some 10s. For sake of example, let's say I got four 10s out of hundreds of cards that I submitted, hundreds of cards, and I got a bunch of nine fives too, because I was submitting only cards that I'd pre-screened, and I'm doing a better job pre-screening and making sure the corners and edges and surface and centering are legit. Well, the four tens that I got, for example, and it's not exactly this way, but it's essentially that I got a 9.5 and three tens. I got a 10, 9.5 and two tens. I got every configuration of one of the subgrades being a 9.5 and the other three being a 10. So they don't hate me. <laughs> they're not trying to avoid, uh, they're not trying to ration out black labels because if they were, give me some, you know, but they're not. And so, and I don't want them to. I want them just grade accurately. And so, to me, that, that's the intellectual accuracy, of, even with me when I'm submitting these cards. And they're about as close to a black label as you can get with three, three tens in three of the categories and 9.5 in each of the other four, you know, one at a time of different cards. And I just thought, guys, but it doesn't work that way. I can't say, hey, guys, give me a break. They don't. They shouldn't give me a break. They should grade every card depending on what it is, what the condition is, without regard to who submitted it, how many they submitted. It's just look at the card. There's no quota because if there would be, then <laughs> there just isn't. So I've got a bunch of tens that are three tens and a nine point five, and the eye appeal is spectacular. Why it's not a black label? What's the difference between nine point five centering or surface or edges or corners? is amazing to me. My eyesight is not good enough to say that it's almost perfect. In fact, it almost means it's a gem mint corner, but not a pristine corner. Gem mint edges, but not pristine edges. It's just hard to even figure out what that means. So again, I'm not unhappy about 9.5. I'm encouraging BGS to stay the course and just continue to do accurate, solid grading and assume every opportunity for market leadership to demonstrate that this is the greatest hobby I want all the graders to prosper, and I want them all to be accurate, because if somebody's messing up or funny business, it will affect PSA, BGS, everybody. All right, thanks for your time, and I will be back again in a couple days with another episode. The man.